I got to tell you, it's amazing. Every week, my brain falls out. I, <laughs> I, I've done this a, a million times, more than these people that are listening to us now even know, and I just I forget to push buttons and just train wreck. Power and Speed, back. 908-751-0211, if anybody's out there listening. Thomas could not make it in today. Um, I was told he is in Asbury Park at a Subaru parade, but we can we can discuss that when he calls. Wow. We tried to get Alan, the engineer, to come in, but he honestly, no bullshit, is making dinner. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Tad will verify. I, I heard him, it. I called him on speaker, said, look, Tom's not here. We got an open mic, chance to hate on him. We need a resident engineer. And he said, nope, he didn't even have the water boiling yet. Swear yeah. to God. Oh, wow. What's up, Crunch? What's up, Mike? How are you? Tad? Good. Tadster. Was it that instant rice that he was making? I don't know. He was making a quiche. I have no idea. Have <laughs> oh, man. No clue. Well, I didn't do much of nothing this week, and I'll let you start, Crunch. You yeah. went to a, an actual race. I yeah. didn't go I didn't go anywhere. Well, I did go somewhere, but no racing. And you went and got the equipment, right? I went and got some fitness equipment. It doesn't fit in my basement, but we can we can revisit that yeah, if we've well, got I'm time. I'm going to have to get on that fitness equipment. <laughs> I'm getting bigger and bigger with the food here. Yeah. So um, where, where did you go? I went to MIR. Bud's Creek, Maryland. Uh, Joe Gray and Larry T. Custom Tees gave uh, an event. Hold on, I, I just saw that. <laughs> Hold Tad on, just flipped did out. your headphones just fall off your head? I was <laughs> yawn and they fell off the back of my head. Oh my god! <laughs> we really need a GoPro in here because people <laughs> need to see. It doesn't need to be on us. It just needs to be on you. Well, that's you now. You know who the star is. Oh yeah, yeah. Continue, okay. Crunch. I'm sorry for the right. interruption from the. Well, I went to this event. And um, I went specifically to watch the cars and the action because, you know, I love the action. But I was a seafood cook-off judge. So that was pretty good. I had uh, seafood gumbo for the first time, and it was uh, really, really nice. Really Isn't good. that pretty much anything that you don't know what to do with? You put in a pot? Yeah, well, it, it. Was, it was shrimp, sausage. I mean, it was potatoes. <clears throat> I mean, it was just what, what, peppers, onions. What I mean, it was, fish does the sausage come from? Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying that's right. part just of the gumbo, man. <laughs> a gentleman sausage, what? And uh that that dish was against the uh, the best tilapia, grilled tilapia I've ever had. It was uh, very amazing. So I had to judge it fifty fifty. I couldn't make a decision. It was just good. Both so, of them were good. So what it you made them co winners? Well, I wasn't the only judge. I was okay. one of five judges. So my, my judgment came in fifty fifty. So pretty much what you just did was cash in for the food. Yeah, I just, you just yeah. wanted to eat. It was good. Free eats. I was I, I couldn't make a decision, to be honest with you, to tell you the truth. But um what what made the event good was they had six sixty action, they had thirteen twenty action, they had grudging for cash, they had class racing, they had shootouts going on, they had bikes, and every time each individual section would come up, the track was on point. So some of the races were no times where the clocks were off. Some of the races, you got to see exactly how fast the cars were because it was a class race. So in this event, which started at 1 p.m. and ended at 1 a.m., we got to see everything. It was crazy. And the track actually got it right. And the track got it right. <coughs> and, Mike, I'm going to tell you, it was so many people there. It was a beautiful event. You know, I'm glad I went. It was a four-and-a-half-hour ride for me. But, you know, it was worth it. My son drove down. I drove back. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of time to be at the track. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, so we got to see a whole lot of stuff, bro. A lot of guys came from uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, Florida. Seen a lot of guys from the Midwest came out. Um, yeah, kind of where thing. that is on the eastern side of the country. It kind of kind of puts you in the middle, right? So right. people would be more willing to take the trip rather than come say all the way up here. Yeah, true. Nice, true indeed. So we had a good time. Uh, shout out to Joe Gray and Larry T for a good event. Was it all their event, or was it actually an actual class event for something as well? Um, it was a lot of stuff going on. This is all I can go off of what I remember, because the flyer had a lot of stuff going on. They had shootouts going on, uh, small block nitrous class. They had a, I mean, it was so much stuff going on. And I thought to myself when I read the flyer that it would be so complicated, it would be boring. They got it right. They did it well. No tree mistakes. You know, we've been talking about the guy, the tracks that aren't used to grudging for cash, making the mistakes. with. The tr it was perfect. They didn't make any mistakes. And the only race that took place that there was a problem, it was because the dudes that chose the grudge race got in the wrong lane because each lane determined how your tree dropped. Oh, okay. So if you didn't know 
which lane to go in, and you put two cars to grudge race in the in the wrong lane. Yeah, they were doing a um, they were doing a, a eighth mile race, but they got in the quarter mile lane. Right. So then they came through the the eighth mile, and you know it was a big argument over that. But it wasn't the track's fault at all. It was their fault because they weren't paying attention all day. Well, hats off to the track for doing that right, yeah. making dedicated <clears throat> lanes. Yeah. yeah, if you got a big enough facility that has enough lanes, that's actually a pretty oh, yeah. good idea. Oh yeah, and they had they had chains up, so you couldn't like if you pull into a certain lane, you couldn't move until they removed the chains for you. Nice. So it was it was a great event. It was a good good deal. I was I was satisfied. I got my money's worth and then some. And free food. <laughs> well, the seafood was a plus. Yeah, seafood was a plus. And I see uh, uh you getting a the text there. No, nah, I was getting Twitter hatred. Oh, okay. from who? Jeff just told me Mixler is showing us off air. Really? I don't know why. Maybe we got bounced. Uh, you downloading something again? I, wow. I don't think so. Test mode. Well, we are recording, right? Uh, yeah. I'm okay. Mixler, so it can't be changed. Back to test. Um, well, okay. You know what we're going to do? We're going to hit stop. Okay. Yes. And then we're going to do it again. Test mode is off. We should be on. Looks to me like we should be on. Okay. <clears throat> You're going to have to edit all of that right there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. This is this is the real deal. Yeah, we're not yeah. we're not trying to make it overly polished. This is real world podcasting. So. <laughs> yeah, if we we're trying to make it overly polished, Tad, you would be able to speak. Uh, so what do you got, Tad? Anything interesting? Uh, a little bit more stuff on Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson's McLaren F1 accident. Why don't you fill some people oh, in on that a little bit? Man. On what, the car or the accident? Well, the but, car and the accident. Well, the car, the car, actually it's an older car now when you look at the, in that point of view, but it's, uh, one of the fastest supercars that ever came out and it was a, a minimalist car basically too. Mm. And because it was rear wheel drive is a, was that a V12 BMW motor in that or a V10? I believe it was a 10. 10. I don't think it was a 12. Yeah. So 660 horsepower BMW V10. And then the, the interesting thing about that car it's a three seater. You sit, you drive it from the middle and the two people sit on your left and right behind you. and no next to you. <laughs> it, it's weird. weird. Yeah. Well, we're next to you and a little bit back from you, but right, right, right. it's a nice carbon built carbon fiber. It's, it's a race car for the road. That's supposed to be the. Yeah. yeah. It is a little strange because the driver really does sit center and the two people do sit like on your left and right behind you. Yeah. yeah like, like they're set back. Right. Well, they're, that, do, they're doing that to be uh, unique, I guess. Well, no, to be to a race car because you can remove those seats and then you're sitting in the center like a real road road race car. That was a real oh. serious deal, and I can't remember what episode of Top Gear it was on. But didn't they race the McLaren against what? Uh, they raced the older McLaren. Was it against a Bugatti? I think it, it was well, against a Bugatti. I, I actually have on my web page that I put on there it hit Roan Atkinson in the Bugatti, Bugatti against the McLaren. Right. But they're mostly just driving around the track with, you know, shots of that. No, blah, this blah. was, or maybe, God, I think it was, God, I'm going to have to look back. Was that with the Stig driving or no? No, yeah. it was, right. it was Hammond. Okay. Hammond was in. Yeah, I think I remember that now. Hammond was in the newer car and I don't remember who was driving the older car, maybe the Stig. And the, the McLaren was faster until they really got going. Yeah. The McLaren was, was pretty, and that's an yeah. old, what, well, when did they stop making that, Todd? Historian uh, that you are? Uh, I just love making you look stupid. <laughs> well, Mr. Bean, now, but. you're saying Mr. Bean crashed this one. Well, he bought it, and as as he said, he didn't buy it as a collector car to put in a garage and blah, blah, blah. He, he bought it as a daily driver, basically. And he put 41,000 miles on the thing. This is things that don't happen on supercars like that. Right, right, right. The car, what, what's the car's worth? Well, he paid $750,000 for it, I, I do believe. Started driving, blah, blah, blah. Had an accident with it. He rear-ended a, uh, a Metro van or something like that. Got it fixed. Then, I couldn't tell you, I think 30, 39,000 miles, he, it's on my, uh, the page and the video, but he, he broke loose on the, on a wet section, spun off the road and split the car in half, basically. The rear, the engine rip, ripped out, it was 20 feet from the car. Oh, it looked totaled. Wow. He hurt his elbow, or I mean his, uh, shoulder about, is about it. Got out. They came, picked it up, and he set the world record for the most expensive car repair in Britain. 
nine hundred thirty thousand pounds to repair the car, which is what what, what is, is it like one point four one point one point one point one point one four million dollars to repair the car, <laughs> and it's a, it's a it's a car that costs three you know three quarters of a million dollars, but it's one point whatever million to repair it. Well, that's what they were new. They were like three quarters of a million, right? Yeah, that's when he bought it. He bought it new. And then, you know, he went through fixing it and he took it from 39 to 41,000 miles. The uh, insurance company told him, listen, since you're a celebrity, you drive the car, you wreck the car, you already, we already paid off on you. So it's going to be 38,000, I think, pounds a year to insure you to drive this car, which is a little retarded. Yeah, but I mean, if you got that kind of money to buy that car, does really does yeah, that, that does, insurance does that insurance really bother, you? bother you that much? You got to wonder. Cause, well, look at the guys with the Bugatti Veyrons. At what ten or fifteen thousand miles, you have to replace the rims because they stress from the weight of the car. And uh, I can't remember what Formula how, One. How heavy is it? That thing's uh, uh, 3,800 or four thousand. Depends on which one you get. The Bugatti is such a strange animal. The the Veyron because it it's really very purposely built right. to do what it does. How it, much horsepower? Uh, the thousand one hundred yeah, or eleven hundred. Oh, wow. Well, now they, they, don't, they've, don't they, tell me pump gas. They, yeah, pump they, fuel. They've uh, well, no, it's Ooh. it's European pump gas, so it's ninety five octane Ron or whatever. Okay. But Holy they said they said they've they've gotten them up to fifteen hundred horsepower. I think on the uh, the carbon fiber model one that's unlike the special weight. versions. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, but you, you couldn't have a light body riding around the street with fifteen hundred horsepower. They're they're pretty oh, insane. I mean, would, they're, that would be a mess. They're all wheel drive. They're they're really really it, an trash, interesting it, car. Trash control to the ninth degree. You know, it's it's beautiful car. I, I that's a two million dollar car, right? Yeah, two and a half million or whatever. But the thing is, like, the, just to replace the rims and tires, the tires were, what, $5,000 a tire or something like that, rated for the 250 miles an hour. Then the rims, it's like $10,000 for the rims to replace them. And the, the one Formula One driver was, was at that point that he had to do the service, and he, he was trying to sell the car instead of putting the money into the car. Well, you know, if anybody <clears throat> hasn't ever seen this car, you know, I mean, and a lot of lot of drag guys like Crunch, I mean, you, you're like, what? what? Mm-hmm. Um, go to Google. And type in Bugatti Veyron top speed, top gear. And that'll give you an impression of what the car is like. And right. specs while they're testing it. And I believe then it went, what, 260 something miles uh, an two, hour? 253 or something 253, like that. 253, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, it, but they're, they're sitting in the car just like, hey, I'm watching it. There's going, wow, look at this. It's, I'm, two, I'm at 150, 160, 170, 180. It's just accelerating yeah, it's probably you know, amazing to see what was that 400 and something kilometers something but yeah and then the, <laughs> even even the american top gear they did it down in alligator alley in florida yeah and they just romp it and he's like holy crap look at it and it's just the, and even uh captain slow when he did it on top mm-hmm. gear that's the one i was talking about that's it, a neat one because they they talk about how much air the engine moves through it and know. how much fuel it's it's drinking at this point in time right. and yep. i think um mayweather has uh the fighter he has a couple of those no oh, well you might. Yeah, his, his collection is a little eclectic there, you know. Yeah, uh, us poor folks can't quite afford anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Well, one, listen, once we get the advertisers lined up here, eh, we'll, we'll all be driving Veyrons. Maybe a couple. <laughs> but even, even when Clarkson, when he was driving it the one time, he's like, look at this. I'm doing 150. He goes, I floor it. I'm pressed back in my seat. Jesus. You know, it's well, like. you got to figure, 1,100 horsepower, at, right. uh, and I think Tad is incorrect. I think they're more than 3,800 pounds. I, I think they're, they're fairly heavy. Well, the original ones were over four, but now they got the race ones that are they lighten them up to, I guess, make it more impressive. Quite, quite possible. I mean, think about that. 1,100 solid lockdown, because they're all-wheel drive, horsepower. That's got to be, it's got to feel like a hell of a ride, yeah, dude. It'll put pin you in the seat, right. for yeah. sure. Well, you got the the key, too, the, the fast or faster, you know. Yeah. So you can't. You turn a key and it lowers the car. Um, it, it allows the motor to make its full power potential. Puts There's the a, wings out. Well, that, and it's got the air brake wing when you yeah. get on the brakes and all that stuff. Yeah, that sounds uh, pretty cool. I'll just take a McLaren. That's all. I not just, not the Mr. B McLaren. I want to. I just I want, want a 2016 SL 550. That's it. You know, I got a video. 110,000. <laughs> 110,000. I'm good. That's it. I, I looked at some of the Mercedes. Tom was looking at a Mercedes. Yeah? Yeah, he was looking. And I, I think he's going to settle. You know, he really got made a dick. He knows I've been... Uh, when the excursion was broke, I was driving around my brother's Equifax. Oh, it's not an Equifax, Equinox. We Equinox. call it an Equinox. We call it an Equifax. He calls it, a, you know, <laughs> I'm all fucked up, but we, we kid around calling it an right, Equifax. Right. right. Um, it's a little shitbox, but it's fun. It's zippy. It's goofy. You know, a little right. four cylinder. It feels like it, it turns 5 million RPM and doesn't go anywhere. Okay. <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, so he said, look, you should go look at a Durango. 
the new Durangos are pretty, you know, they make one, it's called a, a black top version and all, everything's black and, you know. Mm. Wheel, <clears throat> the wheels are black and everything. Yep, body I color. That. I saw that. And he's like, no, dude, they get like 19 or 20. I don't know what the fuck he was reading, because when I went and looked at the V8 one, which ain't a killer, it makes like 360 horsepower. Right. makes like 360 horsepower, 390 foot-pounds of torque. Like, I think the city miles, it was like 14. Which V8 was that mm. in that, you remember? I don't know, 5.7. It was, it was yeah, a 5.7 it, Hemi. It was, all right. All right. But it wasn't wasn't spectacular. Inexpensive. Yeah. I mean, for what it sounds to me like what you get for your money, they have a fantastic technology side. Everything looks pretty good. Like you could get a really, really, really loaded one for under fifty. Really loaded. Like right. with everything you could possibly want. But I mean, that kind of mileage. I mean, listen, I ain't cheap. I drive around a big stupid excursion, but the the thing does get twenty. Right. You know, and if you do a lot of riding around, that kind of sucks. So he was going up to look at a three hundred M. I don't, know if he, I don't know if he made it there or not. He can't handle the minivan. <laughs> <laughs> he's tired of it. But it's him. He did say he's going to have his car back, uh, hopefully this week, th- yeah, this week coming. Sure. Well, he said they got all the parts and he, they're going to work on it. And, you know, he, I, I guess he wants it back to get rid of it. I guess he wants it back. He wants to drive for a little bit and then boost it. Okay. Well, Tom, I know you're listening to when you hear this. He's we probably hope, not listening. Yeah, we hope you uh, get it together, bro, because the soccer van, the soccer mom van, I'm tired of looking at it myself. <laughs> it's pretty bad, dude. <laughs> Every time I see it here, it's it's pretty bad. But he fits it. Whenever you come in, you see him sitting in it. Yeah, it's he, him. He he got me on the Subaru though. Once I saw his his version and what he did to it, it's pretty slick. No, it is pretty slick. And you know, and I always tease him and shit like that. But it it it's pretty slick. It, it it's a neat car. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I guess like they do all kinds of stuff with like brake kits and stuff for him. I mean, and. You know, kind of what I always thought, I, I'd go the other way with this thing. Um, I kind of like the, the rally car type version of that. You know what I mean? Like where it's up a little bit. Right. Where you could, you know, go blasting through a field if you wanted to. I like mean, that. The bigger wheels. Yeah. Good suspension. You know, like the real, because they start out as real cars, don't they? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're pretty badass, those rally cars. They're no joke. And right. I think they make awfully, awfully good power. Well, they're a, a different level, but. Yeah, well, that see that would be that's what I'd like. Yeah, they're they're weird. They're limited. They have a restrictor on the turbo and all that stuff, and you got to find ways to cheat around that. And wasn't, the, uh, wasn't talking about rules, Tad. I'm talking yeah. about you know I want. <laughs> you know, what a, they, know what they got? That's nice. A sequential stick, you know, transmission. Yeah, it's pretty neat. But uh, you want to explain what the sequential means? It's like a motorcycle. You got one, two, three, four, five. You know, you just shift bang, bang, bang through the gears. But, the, but telling somebody bang, bang, bang through the gears, I mean, you could, uh, yeah. what what it means is it's one motion. It's forward is first, back <laughs> is second, forward again is third. There's no side to side. Right. right. Is it for, there's a back, forth, or just bang, you're pulling it back, back, back like a It motorcycle. could be a ratchet or it yeah. could be forward and backward. But the problem is that eats through the gears because they get dog face, you know, synchros and stuff yeah. like that. So it's, I wanted one after I blew up my five speed and I was looking at it. I was like, well, oh, I don't want to be having to replace every year rebuilding my transmission or something like that, you know. That thing ain't never going to move. Yeah. It'll, it'll right. never move out of your driveway, dude. That <laughs> Not my driveway. Park there for well, wherever it's resting. It will be its resting place for a long time. Yeah, it's going to move. So I, I have to bring up something kind of funny. Tad actually found a magazine. Yes. Right. Now, I mean, I remember, now granted, <laughs> I'm getting a little older here. Right. And I, I got to, I always got to remember that, that I'm not, not the 21 year old guy I think I am anymore or even younger for right. that matter. Okay. Anybody's Just your girlfriend's right. Female. Um, <laughs> if I haven't seen a magazine place worth anything anywhere in probably the last five years. I mean, like I, you go into Seven Eleven and you see like some fitness magazines and you know, all the, the woman's shit, you know, my maxi pad daily, whatever the hell they got. <laughs> There's never, yeah, I know an Alan's going to cringe at that one, yeah. but I mean, you never, uh, I don't, I don't see car stuff. I mean, and it, are they still around? Yeah. Are they really? I'm well, not, I, I got looking. a subscription, so they sent it to me and they even sent me an email. Do I want to keep on getting it in paper or do I want to get it, you know, That's a PDF? That's so. what I was figuring. I figured everything would go digital now. Wow. Crunch is analyzing. I'm checking it out. I haven't yeah. seen one in a while. I used to. Oh, October 2015 is this issue. So yeah. it is legit. Yeah. It just, just came today. <laughs> it's, I mean, there used to be car craft, super stock, and then- Super it, Chevy. Yep, I, super I miss Chevy. super stock and stuff like that. 
Superstock was good because it was geared around Superstock, but Lowrider magazine. I, I never them. read that. That was with uh, the cars and the trucks. Lowriders. Never read that. I yeah. did. Well, you don't read it. You look <laughs> at the pictures. <laughs> never read that. <laughs> you look at the pictures. Well, I, I had, the I had Hot Rod and Carcraft back in the day. Yeah, Hot Rod, Carcraft. You know, Super, Super Chevy. Those were kind of the ones that you wanted to read. Right. They they always had the good shit. Muscle you know, Mustang, you know, fast forwards. Yeah, I, I still have a couple years of Superstock magazines that I collected. I think in English town people buy them. Oh, that's that's my car in this magazine. Yeah. They buy them off me. But yeah, we got we got something that uh, the the one gentleman that my father and author, you know, he, the columnist, he wrote something about my dad in uh, Drag Illustrated recently. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, they're down. To, I should probably scan to cover that and put that up. Um, but that was the last time. And you know, in order to get that magazine, I had to order it, and it came from Canada. Really? Mm. I had I had to actually order a magazine from Canada. I, I just, I don't think they're anyway. They said they were at Barnes and Noble, but I went to the places and they weren't there. Right, right. Or well, Barnes and Noble or whatever one's still around. You want on the circle around. or no? I don't, or Borders. Who's still around? Uh, Barnes and Barnes Noble. Barnes and Noble is. All right, yeah. Yeah, I went there and there, there was nothing. <laughs> well, they, they got, then you know, I'll go in there and scan the magazines there, but. Yeah, it's just uh, kind of amazing. And, you know, Tad walks in all excited. Look at this. Hellcat killer. Because there's a Camaro on the front, but and you flip through and it's a damn super stock car almost. I know. It, well, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a that's tub. It's got a looks like Dana rear, all that stuff. Here's the problem, in case you twin, in, twin turbo. In case anybody hasn't figured this out, I am a Chevy guy. Okay, I am. I know Crunch is a Chevy guy. Die hard. Who's driving a Ford diesel? But anyway, yeah, I'm. I, yeah, it's a Ford diesel, and they did a better job back then. In fairness, and if if Chevrolet was listening or had their head pulled out of their ass, they would have a Duramax. <laughs> Or something of the like in a Suburban or an Escalade or, you know, whatever. They they, well, have, they are. Well, they're supposed to, but yeah. it's been rumored forever. And they, you know, what it comes down to is GM is having a hard time doing anything right. And, mm. and trying to wave the Chevy flag is getting a little frustrating. And what's more frustrating is the Fruit Loops of the automotive industry, who used to be the Chrysler guys. Are now the normal guys. Yeah. Oh, the, wow. The Chrysler guys, they, they've got, the Chrysler's got their shit together. Their designs are good. Not thrilled with their Durango gas mod. You might want to work on that, guys, if you're listening. Take notes. <laughs> but, I mean, the, the new Chrysler stuff, man, they've really got their shit together. They've got a lot of nice stuff. Yeah. Chrysler's been, they've been coming around with the nice cars and the nostalgic look for the newer cars. They got it. They got it. Well, the Challenger, right. yeah. Oh, that challenge is tough. It is. It, and they, that's the best job of a retro car that I've seen oh, definitely. in a long time. That's true. The Mustang is a close second. Now, the the brandy new Mustang, Tom and I, you know, I guess we'll get into that, went on a little road trip this weekend. And um, for those of you who are not quite as old as I am, there used to be a TV show, Get Smart. Oh, <laughs> and he used to always say missed it by that much well that's exactly what happened with the piece of equipment uh, fitness equipment that i wanted to put in my basement and with many careful measurements of the tape measure i was pretty damn sure it would fit so i lugged everything to the basement and uh went to put it together nope <laughs> like, you, <laughs> you missed it by that, that much, much. <laughs> yep so tom and i went to go pick up this thing so we uh we did, we drove to New York, to Middletown, New York from here, which is probably about an hour and 40 minutes. Right. You know, it was, a, it was a pretty good road trip. And um, we did see one of those, uh, a brand, brand new Mustang. And honestly, I got to tell you, nice looking car. Yeah. Really nice looking car. They look good. Yep. They, 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 I've seen the GTs with the uh, the new newer version of the 5.0. Cars Coyote. look good. They sound good. I mean, Ford did a good job. Well, the, the thing that bothers me about Ford right now is it's still, they're kind of hanging on to the, to the sedan hot rod type platform. You know what I mean? They don't really have like the sports car side of things. Now, I mean, what does Ford have? They had the, the GT, right? Well, it's coming out again. I know, but it's not at a human price. Oh, of course not. Right. Well, I mean, you know, you got Chevrolet, it's got a hot rod. Right. Chrysler's Viper, I don't think is quite that expensive, are they? Are they really, I mean, compared to a new Z06 Corvette? Yeah, but is that even part of Chrysler anymore? Or is it SRT? It's a totally separate. I, I don't know because SRT stuff. I don't stuff. see too many Vipers anymore. No, they're, they're out there. Oh, Somerville, they're they're yeah. crawling all over Somerville. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think that if I remember right, those things were like around 110, you know, probably 80 to 110, depending on which well, they, one it they was. They started when you could get it with a V8, a 360 V8. I think they were like, what, 60 or... 60 or 80 at that point. When you it was put a, some Flowmasters on the new Charger, I mean, uh, Challenger, and phew, that's that's the car. 
Oh, yeah, they sound good. They sound good. I don't know how they perform, but that's that's the new. You remember eighty seven to ninety three Mustang back in the day it was only fourteen grand. You go get it, and you're automatically a fourteen old car. Thirteen nine. You change the exhaust around, put a B three hundred three cam in it. You're down in thirteen fifties. Kind of where I was going with this yeah, whole thing, yeah, because yeah. now what's happened is is the Mustang. I I think Ford. I don't know if they consciously did this. But when I was working with like some of the, the Ford whackers that were, you know, the supercharged guys and stuff, they, uh, I, I got to see some of the Ford like SVO stuff mm-hmm. wasn't as high tech. And like, you know, you think <laughs> like you think, uh, SVO and you engineers and computers and, yeah, you no. know, fucking oscilloscopes and everything. No, no. I mean, from, from my side looking in and the people that they were dealing with, right. To try to learn things. Right. They were dealing with guys that were like me and you, drag racing these things and figuring out what they liked. Well, turn up the boost and find out what blows up. What yeah. Breaks. Kind of, kind of, <laughs> kind of how it was, which is not it's a bad approach. It's a, yeah. Seated the pants. Now, what Ford did is in the very beginning with like Jimmy LaRocca, Nitrous Pete, and all those guys that were, were back there, they, they gave them the ability to work on the computers little by little. Mm-hmm. And then once they did that, GM had their shit locked down. Like new fuel injection stuff, GM was like, Ooh, nobody's working on any of this. We're going to make all the money in repairs. You know, this is yeah. this is the deal." And that the that year's Camaros, when the tune port stuff came out, mm-hmm. if you remember, Camaros like kind of they were known as dogs, couldn't fuck with them. They're a mess. And then all of a sudden, Mustangs everywhere. Yep, everywhere. And now you look at the staging lanes of a racetrack, populated by a lot of Mustangs. A lot of Mustangs. They are the new early Camaros. There you go. There you go. I, I look around most of the tracks, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, uh, performance-wise, um, from better to best, it's supposed to be stock suspension, ladder bar, then four lane. But Ford had the suspension of the stock Mustang mm-hmm. in a four link fashion, but it was stock suspension. Yep. So now in 2015, you can cheat because it's really a four link setup. But they're, de- they're describing it as stock suspension, adjustable, but they're doing killer numbers like a tube chassis car would do. Yeah. So I, yeah. I've seen some of the stock back half Mustangs go very, very fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, but I mean, it, it's good. And, and, you know, honestly, this is why I fucking am just disgusted with GM. Because l- at least from my side, from the outside looking in, you've got Chrysler. They, and you know, this is something else. I want to know if either you guys and Ted, I'll put you on this and any of the the listeners hear anything about this. I heard, and I looked all over the internet and I brought up to Tom and I heard it someplace. I'm real good at doing this. I hear something or read something from a credible source. It gets stuck in my head. Couldn't tell you where the fuck I read it, but I know (laughs) I read it or I know I heard it. And it wasn't like some nitwit standing on a corner that told me it was something credible somewhere there was something, some directive to a Dodge dealers that they are not to rape people on the Hellcat re-release. They're not like, they are not going to, you know, charge oh. 20, 30, $40,000 over sticker price. You know, that there For was availability. A, yep. There is wow. an allotment over the sticker that they could be. And, and the word that I got, and I, it's going to make me crazy to figure out where I heard this. Cause I believed it was that if a dealer is caught doing this, it would be the last Dodge car they will sell. And, and and I believe Chrysler on that. Right. But the, the reason I bring that up is, look, Dodge made these things and sold all of them. Why'd they sell all of them? Because they made 700 fucking horsepower. There's a lot yeah. of people like us out there that are like, what kind of gas monsters? Don't care. Right. How much horsepower does it make? Seven? I'll take it. Right. GM, the fuck are you doing? Right. E- even for that matter, Ford is stepping up. But to me, that was an experiment on what people in the USA want to buy that they made them, they sold them out and they said, okay, well we can't make them fast enough. So we're going to retool. We're going to make sure we're, we're up to speed and we're going to make more. Aren't they making them in the charger now or charger Hellcat? I I don't know what it's going to be, but there's another version of them. Right. And, and I mean, that shows the direction that these car makers have to go look Ford. Okay. If you're listening, anybody from Ford, look at, take, look up a 2001 diesel excursion. Okay. Like mine, like my shit box out there. I just fixed. All right. Look what they're still getting on eBay. Okay. Expensive. 
that they had, I guarantee you, they had the last year they made excursions and gas sitting on a showroom floor, brand new, two years later, because nobody wanted them. Right. But the diesels, they bought them all. What'd they do? Tanked it. Tanked mm. it. So we don't need this anymore. Now you've got great diesel motors. You've got great vehicles like the Suburbans and stuff. They ride like cars. There's great Duramax diesel motors. The Ford certainly has their new diesels. Fantastic. What the fuck are you people doing? Right. Do they not realize what people want to buy? I mean, everybody says this stuff. We want high horsepower cars that, that are regular cars, not $120,000 cars. What was the Hellcat? What was the price of that? What is that, 70 or what? I, I, th I think it was under 70. 60 something. 60 something. Yeah. Heavy ass car, but a lot of power and very fast. Well, I mean, we I see what you're saying, but then you have to look at Cadillac, which is a GM, you know, rendition. The Cadillac is a luxury car, but it's riding around with 500 horsepower. Well, they've 450 got 450 horsepower. The the new V series yeah. is again is a good representation of what this is going to be. But I think that if you go look up, at, first off, it's a Cadillac, right? Which I I I am partial to Cadillacs. I, every time I went to Vegas, I rented something. And I always tried to get a Cadillac CTS or one of those little SRX things. They're nice right. cars to right. drive. They got nice little creature comforts, you know, you heated, cooled seats, tickle your balls if you push a button. It's nice. So uh, <laughs> I I would have loved to have a V series, but they're fucking expensive. Right. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, the look, the luxury cars are coming with a lot of horsepower. Yeah. The Mercedes is three, it's, it's 350, It's getting easier to make that power level. Yeah, we got somebody calling. Oh, just look at that. Ooh. <laughs> We're hold on a minute. Hey, you're on the air. Sort of. Hold on. Maybe not. Caller. Caller, you there? Try again. You there? Caller. <laughs> I'm such a failure. <laughs> you there, buddy? I hear you a little bit. Call oh, they hung up. Caller, you're live. Now they're gone. He's well, gone. I got the Hellcat prices. What did it cost? For the... Uh, Starting at sixty thousand nine hundred and ninety bucks. Then with a manual So they're almost they're almost under sixty. <laughs> yeah, and then with a manual transmission of sixty one sixty one three ninety. Wow, now see that's something I didn't know. They made that thing with a manual trans with seven hundred horsepower. That's got to feel good. <laughs> that's got to feel like a guy better be used to changing fucking transmissions because that better be a you better put a good tire in that thing. Everything's gonna break. I can't wow. Wow. I didn't know they made that with an auto. They have an manual. independent roof suspension, too. We have to get Tom to get us one so we can test drive. <laughs> there, Tom, your next car is a Hellcat. Yeah, Tom, huh? we need we need a, a test dummy car. We need one quick. You know what's a shame of it is? I had a, there was one at a local dealer near me, and I figured that I'd go, you know, I was actually thinking about buying it, and then by the time I, it was a green one, too. <laughs> And I was like, that would have been pretty cool. And by the time I went up there to actually go look at it, it was up here at, at the Flemington Dodge really? dealer. Yeah. Okay. And by the time I decided to go up and look at it, it was gone. I mean, I looked at it online and saw that it was there. And oh, I said, you know what? From out of state probably just swooped in and got it because or something. Because they were out. People were talking about them, but they didn't didn't catch on quite. And then all of a sudden, like somebody lit the fuse, gone. And then the ones that were left, through the roof. Mm. Through the mm -hmm. roof. But I mean, it's just, and, and like we've talked about it, it's, it's fuel economy standards. It's where they got to be. You know, they, they can't make too much stuff. That's like what we would want, or they end up not being able to, you know, meet the EPA requirements. Well, I was reading a webpage on the buildup of the engine. I couldn't, uh, it shocked me. They have powder metal rods. Yeah. You figure they, on a specialty motor like that, they do, you know, maybe an aftermarket rod or something like that, or an H beam. I think the technology has gotten so much better yeah. that it, it just doesn't matter as much anymore i think they got a they got a much better handle on how to make parts in, a, in an inexpensive form but i mean i just i i'm just i'm dying for something good that that's really exciting i mean hellcat that that's great but i think the thing is still an insane weight do you have the weight of that thing uh, i thought somebody told me they were five thousand pounds no i know they're over four well, might have been sure. Tom, because Tom's yeah. always full of those little facts. It's got toys. seven reasons why you really don't want to own a 2015 Hellcat. <laughs> <laughs> One of them might be Zeus buttons required on the trans if it was a stick. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I'm waiting for uh, General Motors to figure out what they're going to do with the IROC Camaro, like a newer version, and, and take it back to 18436572 firing order, hey, 5.7. Good luck with that. 
You know, something, just just give me some nostalgia. Okay, the engineer has checked in and he said that a Hellcat is 4,100 dry. Tad, fact check that. (laughs) Fact check that. Is that my buddy, Alan? I think he is done with the quiche. Alan, are you done with the quiche? (laughs) You know, you could call Alan, you fag. There's no reason. Look, ask your wife if you can use the phone and call in. 908-751-0211. I'm going to get hated on again. I'm just going to get random text hatred all the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, now, listen to this. Seven reasons why, just the, the headers on it. Number one, it's, it's expensive. Duh. Number two, it's terrible in the snow. Who drive it in the snow? Sounds like a bunch of Democrats are at that. <laughs> Three, you'll spend oh. a fortune on tires. Well, okay, that's a given. Four, you will spend a bigger fortune on gas. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Five, you'll spend a fortune on insurance. Yeah. Oh, the insurance has to be sky high. Other muscle car owners will hate you. Well, that's a good thing. Obviously, you're looking at something that's made for comedic value. Can yeah. we find something that's factual, like the weight of the car? That's what we were looking for, Thaddeus. Uh, Come on, Cletus, really? Tadster. <sighs> and, and I'm a Democrat. Thank you very much. Are you really? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. George Bush pushed me to Democrat for life. He pushed a lot of Republicans' <laughs> buttons, too. But, you know, look. You you kind of got to give Donald Trump a little bit oh, of credit, don't no, you? No, we are not going to do Donald Trump. Come on, on the man, car show. he's a little bit of a hater. If Donald Trump pulled in here with a brand new dually that I love, yeah. I wouldn't give him any respect. What if he said, "Crunch, you can have this"? I wouldn't take it. Oh my god! I'll buy my own. Oh my God. I'm not too proud to kiss ass. Somebody's giving me something like that. I, I listen, I don't I like would, his hair. I would massage Hillary Clinton's cankles for a brand new vehicle. Oh, I wouldn't man. even think well, I think I'm leaving this I podcast. Have, <laughs> no self respect. I have another engineer yeah. that's got one. How I'm many sponsors want us now? Oh, <laughs> Lord. Did you, did you find this information, Tad, while uh, we were giving you some time? Yeah, no, of course oh, not. My God. How about Hellcat? Shipping weight in the Google with two O's. Somebody's calling. I know. I wonder if it's Alan. I wonder if his wife let him use the phone. No. Let's see. Straight line somebody. Let's, uh, let's get him on here. I don't want to care about that. Hey, buddy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, we hear you, ma'am. Did you call in the listen or did you call in the talk? Well, I'm, I'm calling to ask a bunch of questions. Have at it. He's on. Crunch, you there? Yes. First of all, who are you? Oh, well, you know me. I just want to know if that Camaro yawns is ready because my Malibu is. <laughs> okay. Well, who is it? This is James. James? Oh, you know me. Cornick? Yeah. Uh, now, now, James, you're going to call the radio station and we haven't even discussed anything? Why would hey, you man, do I'm that? a grudge racer. I, I see you on there. I'm going to get it. Ooh, oh, I'm a grudge man. racer. You have I haven't seen you grudge race since the nineties. Well, I'm ready to race you. <laughs> well, how you how you sit? How you sit if you're ready to race me? Small block, full body car, except for the hood and the seat. Right. Street tires closed up. Right. That's how I'm sitting. That's it? That's all you're gonna give me? That's all you need. Okay. You, that's what you got. But no, I have a standard degree small block. I don't care nothing about your standard degree. Right, of block, course. We yeah, but so but you, James, come only on. Thing you're gonna see that I ain't got no nitrous on the car. Right, but but it's a small block. But why would I entertain a race with you? And I, you're gonna say head up. You know you have to spot a standard degree if you can't say you don't, I don't have, have a standard degree. I have to spot degree. nothing. You need to come your uh, best. Well, then I come with another car. Then I run you head up. Come with that car. No, I run you head up. You don't have to ask any more questions. Small blocks apiece. As long as it's stock suspension, we run head up. No juice apiece. No power additives. Close for up for your street. much. Close up on street tires. No. That's what I told you. No, that's what I you told, told me. But now, now you want to now you want to be clear on the on the description when it's not in your favor. It's that same Malibu you saw in that garage. Your son saw in the garage. The exact same Malibu. Yeah, but I beat I beat that Malibu in the '90s. So what it was in oh, the '90s has nothing to do with now. I, I didn't own that car in the night. Right, but I don't care who owns it. But get, guess what? This podcast is a little different than most. So I'm glad you called in. I'm glad you tried hey man, to. listen, I'm a grudge racer. You, you right. tended to be a grudge racer. Okay, okay. But I see you on the radio, and I wanted to ask you a question. Right. Is your Camaro ready? No, my Camaro is not ready right now. 
But the, even with what you're saying, it still wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do a race because you have a, a non standard degree small block and wanting to run well, me head up with it. You know, I have well, a standard want, degree. What, what do you want? Uh, do you want? I don't know. We have to discuss it. So we're wasting time right now on this podcast i'm asking you what do you want we'll have to discuss it james before we even get to the podcast part where we might have to lock something in because here we do business and we do things right you and i will have to discuss it so there's a proper procedure we you have to follow it right now were you scared to discuss it no on i'm not i'm not scared of anything bro i beat the car before so i spotted it before and beat it so i'm not worried about the car just like yours non-standard it's not like mine Mine is standard I degree. I'm full body, like yours. Mine, yeah, I'm full body. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, what's this guy's name? What's your name, sir? James Cornick. James, how are you? It's Mike. All right, how you doing, Mike? Good, man. So uh, we're we're glad you called in. Glad you're listening. <laughs> and and it, it's kind of, it is a little humorous watching Crunch get a little bit of tolling on here because th- this is <laughs> this is how it, this is how it works. This is like being back in Newark, except right. we're just not face to face. Right, right, right. So I'm not in Newark. You're what? He's down south now, but he's from, he used to race in Newark. Newark. If you see him with his his, his four eyes and glasses and stuff, you'll remember. Okay. I I might. Um, (laughs) So is is your thing a standard degree head or no? No, it's a straight head. Okay. So so it's not standard head. Everybody that know the car knows it's a straight head. Everybody but him. Um, Nobody, the car has been sitting for years, John James. The last time I saw it, I raced it in the nineties. When they was trying to sell a car, it was a straight hit. When they was trying to sell it, I didn't. I don't remember when they were. I don't remember when they were trying to sell it, bro. Oh well, it's a straight hit. It's closed up on street tires. It has nitrous, but I'll run you without it. Well, I mean, you know, it all sounds good. We can negotiate something. You, you know, you well, can get in touch with me. We right here on those but, those but right now, we, it's not gonna. We're not gonna negotiate it or come to anything right now on this radio like show. Somebody's scared. Oh, <laughs> oh well, damn! What's, yeah, but what's but what's there to be like scared of, scared. James? What's there to be scared of when you know you have an advantage because you know how my car sits? Now you I come. Said what kind of spot you want? I can't. We'll have to get into more detail. I can't just come up with it what right now. Hell do you need? Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, you just lost a hundred dollars to my son and little Mark, right? No, I ain't lose nothing to your son. Uh, no, okay. You don't know. You don't know. Any, you just lost a hundred dollars to little Mark cause you couldn't post, right? With your Mustang, correct? And now you're getting quiet. We're supposed to run for almost 20. You, you lost a hundred dollars to put the DP up. You didn't even have the, the, the Mal- DP. The Malibu crunch. Go ahead. The Malibu is ready. So I'm asking you, what do you want to do with it? You, my car is not ready right now. My car is not ready right now today. 8, 10, 15. It's not ready right now today. No. What, when are you going to be ready? Um, as, soon as, as soon as I possibly can. That's why I was telling you for you to call for you to call and you hadn't even spoken to me already. That that was like a coward move, bro. Me and you grown. We men. We men. We supposed to, we supposed to handle this like gentlemen. Listen, All right. This is <laughs> All right. I'm going to jump in here. Yeah. I'll be like the moderator. And I don't want to be the DP guy. So don't look at me. <laughs> um, here, Here's what I want, James. When do you feel, J- James, my James, Crunch, when do you feel you're going to have your car ready? Is it going to be ready gonna, by the end of the I'm year? I'm not going to say. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It'll be ready by the end of the year. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we do this? Why don't we revisit this? When your car is ready, you can use this show as the formal... I'm ready for all you guys that want to call me out. Right. And then what we can do is guys like James here on the phone can call in and call you out. Yeah, I like that. It makes sense. How does that sound? I, that's what the show was. I, I actually thought this what the show was about. No, it's uh, we. I mean, well, our show is about cars, and we we have a different format. But you still, even if the, our show was about all out action, you can't call me out on the show, and you didn't even ask me if my car was ready. That shows you, you you thought you had an element of surprise, but now you look stupid. Now you look stupid because you don't even have a standard degree like me. You have something better, and you're acting like it's just like me. I asked you what kind of spot you want. And I can't get into it right now until I get into more information with you, bro. I've been doing this. You know how long I've been doing this. We've watched each other do this. The car you're talking about, I spotted that car. I beat that car to death already. What more information do you need about the car? I don't need any information. 
What more information? I'd rather, rather run you this I'd rather run you with all you said. Head, Listen to me, James. Straight head, small block Chevy with nitrous. Listen to I'll me, James. Off and run your head up. Listen to me, James. On street guys, pulled by over three thousand pounds. I'll come small block all motor stock suspension and no juice and run you head up and you can shoot that shit okay. for at least 20 or better all you gotta do all you gotta do is act like that's what you wanna do you gonna sit with street Man. tires capped up all you gotta do is stay quick uh we'll talk about it Kamau. we'll talk no 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 I'm not talking about my Kamau you know my Kamau doesn't sit that way so you you know I'm not talking about my Kamau Wait a minute. On small block. No, no, no. I said, I said, undisclosed degree small block on motor. You could come with that Malibu the way you just said it. You can shoot that car. I'm going to come on motor and run you head up. On what kind of tires? Don't worry about all that. I'm not going to have any power out of you can shoot all you want long as it's you driving and I'm driving. Oh, oh. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that you don't know nothing about this game. Not a damn thing. A small block? A small block. Small block. On motor. I'll run it with my Mustang. I'll run it with my Mustang. See, you keep the... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is right, like being in Newark. Right, that's what I'm saying. We, we, we could go back and forth all day. <laughs> I got, Bruh. A, no, I got a, a small block Mustang to run that car. Well, you supposed and to... I'll run that car. Now you're switching cars. I'm James. Wait a minute, you switched first. James, but you came at me. You didn't even call me to tell me anything about anything and you I'm called here as if as gentlemen, if i'm supposed to jump on it gentlemen yeah, i don't james. mean it i don't mean interrupt but we actually have two other callers yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well up. james it was nice talking to you and uh, keep in mind everything you said tonight because it's going to be recorded i will guarantee you some grudge racing for so cash please, this year because i've been wanting to bust your ass since no the 90s body. you don't run nobody use a fleet james I done beat the car already. So how you going to say that? I beat the car to beat death. I spotted it. I spotted it and beat it in the 90s. Did, did I own it? Who cares? You ain't never had nothing fast. You, you're a nobody. You're calling this show because I'm here. Think about that, bro. Uh, I'm calling you. To, Put some glasses on your glasses. I'm calling, okay? I'm calling you to get at you. and you. Okay. Well, we we it, there's a process that has to take place, James. You know this. It's a Monday night. Podcast. It can't happen tonight just yeah. like that. Yeah. Andre, you on there? Oh boy. All right. We we got another all right, James, <laughs> thanks for calling seriously, bud. When when crunch is ready, I'll make sure that yeah, you guys yeah. have a chance to get on him. Because it's fun. Did. <laughs> Come on small block. That did that did yeah, we could ready. we could we could go on small block. I'll be on small block tonight around ten o'clock when I Perfect. get home. So come see me all on right. small block positive. We'll discuss everything that's what supposed to be discussed long was, before yeah. DP is put up. Uh, whoops! <laughs> that was me. I didn't mean to hang up on anybody. That was uh, completely hey, an accident. I was trying you, to get the next you, call. You did up. us all a favor. No, I didn't mean to. I feel bad because I'm not that host. I don't <laughs> right, hang up. Right, right, right. I don't hang up. And there's uh, somebody else fuck. here. Uh, somebody from a New York telephone. Go ahead. Call her. It says cell phone New York. I hear you. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. now I got you. What's up? What's going on, guys? Oh, okay. Crazy horse. Uh, Sammy. Crazy horse. Crazy horse. What's going on, bro? What's going on, man? How's everything? Yeah, you you had a you had a couple of races this weekend at MIR. You had you had Take a race a match, in, to me. and Billy G had yeah Billy G raced, but you know you you gave it a shot. Yeah, but it was a good race. I ain't mad. Right. Like Carolina Killer, he did his thing. It was a good race. I ain't mad at that race. Now that was Man, two, that was a good race right there. That was two small blocks, passenger blocks, uh, all motor, stock suspension Mustangs, right? That was, uh, it was pretty decent. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a head-up race. And he, he didn't beat you by a lot, did he? Nah. Yeah, because you got him out. Nah, not, not by a lot at all. Oh, okay. Maybe a bumper. Right. Well, and you were the... Uh, not at all. And you were one of the cooks for the seafood uh, cook-off. 
He's he's the one that made the uh, tilapia that was okay. banging. My my fish goes to tuna fish in a pouch. That's as far as I go, dude. <laughs> it's just <laughs> well, he made a he made a he made a tilapia. Of course, that was, we're gonna have to feed him some of that tilapia. Then. That tilapia that was tilapia. the best. I, that's why I couldn't I couldn't uh, and I had to go fifty fifty because that was it, some good if you, fish. If you tell me it's good, I'll try it. I just ain't a real big seafood guy. I right, mean, it don't right, swell right. up or nothing. Like right, I don't right, have right. any allergies, but yeah, it just yeah, yeah. I, I'm tuna in a pouch on some rye bread, and I'm I'm all right. <laughs> Like, well, we we went a long way for that that seafood cook off. So yeah, but it was worth it. Sounds like it was yeah. a good event. Yeah. Well, did you have fun at the at the event, Crazy Horse? Oh yeah, it was it was great. I had a good time there. Yeah, Joe Gray did Joe, a good job. Joe and Larry T always throw a good event. Yeah, they did a good job. Larry T and Joe, good job. Yep, awesome. Well, I mean, listen, it's nice you, you called in again, and you know, please, every everybody listening, you know, if you got an event you want us to plug, you know, call in and talk about it. It's yes, the best way to get the word out. There. Uh, hopefully, September twelfth will be the next one on the island, but it's going to be a, a late one this time. Oh, All okay. right, uh, okay. Three, it's going to be three to since the racing starts at three, and it'll be done about eleven thirty at night. All right, sweet. Okay. Good. Well, give it. Keep us up on keep us up on details, and we'll make sure we we get the word out as best we can for you. Sounds good. Thanks All right. a lot. All right, ma'am. See ya. Call in and check in. All right. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Now, yes, we have the legend, right. the engineer, oh. Alan. Oh, oh wow, Fudrick, are you there? Dude, how we doing? Oh, oh <laughs> look who's there, <laughs> Alan. What's going on, bro? Hey, Crunch. How are you? Handled that re- that. The way you handle James, you're my hero. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've been I've been doing this for a long time. I don't even know why they did that. That was that was like some coward move. Yeah, no, that that seems a bit out of line, but I think you handled it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan, surprisingly, your T-Mobile sounds very good. Oh, yeah. very good. Hey, you actually right, will try not to move or leave <laughs> the cell site or whatever. Yeah, don't get nothing out of the oven or anything. Just wait till we're we're off the thing no, here. I'm gonna sit very still for a while. Now, Tad, have you found the Hellcat shipping weight? Because yes. a person on the Mixler chat put in uh, B doc forty one hundred dry. And no, was, no, uh, no, uh, I no. Very heavy. And Jeff corrected me. Somebody B <laughs> underscore doc said forty five sixty. I got curb weight here is forty four eighty eight. All right, so we're all over the map. Right. Yeah. Well, it's definitely over yeah, four thousand. Yeah, somewhere probably around forty three is fair. So over 4,000 pounds is safe to say. Yeah. So it's really, really heavy. So you put, oh. you know, look, if 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 we, if we could call it, like there's two things we got there that are 4,500. You put a 200-pound driver in it, it's 4,700 pounds. That's yeah. a heavy-ass fucking car. Right. And it's still- Oh, no, shit. I, I really don't want to drag race a 65 caddy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a 65 caddy weighs. Wow. But here, here's one thing on it. Guess what? It's average miles to gallon is 16 miles a gallon. That's the one that you had a problem with, so. No, but see, but, but with seven hundred horsepower, it's pretty good. Sixty-five caddy would do that on the highway. A, a sixteen mile per gallon Hellcat compared to a, a sixteen average mile per gallon Durango. I think <laughs> right. the Hellcat's a little more fun. Right? Yeah, I could live with I the Hellcat. Know, a lot no, more fun. Honestly, uh, hey, I'm one of those guys that Dodge. Is, I, I, I'm not sure yet, but I'm pretty sure Dodge is going to buy back my truck if I buy a new Dodge. Get a Hellcat, and I can't find one I want. Hellcat. Why would they buy back your Dodge? Uh, it was a big uh, thing it's talking about. It's unsafe. Yes. Oh, yeah? They have a recall on your truck? They have more than just his. Really? I didn't hear anything about yeah. that. No, no. 500,000 Dodge. Yeah. Trucks. Holy smokes. And I know Alan's wasn't affected by the internet hacking because that thing's a, a ancient. <laughs> you ain't got any of that. No, I, I literally, I have the FM radio. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's an old I I didn't hear anything about that. I didn't know that was happening. Oh yeah, no, no. Uh, uh, now, what are they buying back at fair market value, or what are they doing? What they're doing is uh, purchase price minus depreciation plus ten percent. That's what the government told them they had to do. Wow, wow! I didn't hear about this. I didn't either. And my truck was cheap, so I'm not going to get a ton of money. That sounds major, though. Yeah, but if you're getting plus ten percent, that's not so bad, right? And they're pushing you into but a newer truck vehicle. New, I, the, the sticker was probably twenty one. I bought it for nineteen. Mm, okay. You know, I'm not going to get a ton of. I can't go out and get. You know, if I was going to buy a new Dodge, I wouldn't buy a Hellcat. I'd probably buy a base V8 uh, Challenger. I mean, they're just pretty. Yeah, and they're not. They're not terribly expensive either. Well, thirty five. 
No, you're more of a charger guy than me. Four door. Uh, L cam. No, I know. L cam? Yeah. Eh. The five year old. I should want a back door, but you know what? The Challenger is just pretty. I, I, I got to tell you, I like a lot of their designs. Uh, yeah. And it kills no. me because anybody that knows me, isn't- I, I have teased Tad and Alan relentlessly for years. Uh, being Chrysler guys, right? You know, I mean, and they, they, you know, Alan will say it goes, runs the whole list. You know, you're nonconformist, you're retards, you know, you want to be different, you know, and <laughs> it just, I mean, at that, and, and, you know, don't take offense to that Chrysler guys. I mean, if you're retarded, I don't want you to feel bad about it. <laughs> it's just that, you know, you get brought up. Chrysler. Yeah, not, not, that's real nice. You're, you're Mr. Politically Correct Democrat. And you're making retard noises over there. There, there's. <laughs> You get brought up. I'm imitating what you were describing. Okay. All right. <laughs> N- nice save. <laughs> There's when you when you get brought up around Chevys or you get brought up around Chryslers, that's just kind of where you get stuck. You know, right. we were in a Chevy shop. That's all we did. So everybody else, dummies. <laughs> you know, the only people that were worse than you guys were the Buick Olds and Pontiac guys. Like, because the, oh, the, the wow. other GM product guys, they were a little, they were a little kooky. Oh, the Grand National was <laughs> godly. That was a little different. That was that was a move into a different type. Yeah. But like we're talking about the old Bop guys. Uh, yeah. Huh. GTO. Uh, I did I did own a couple of four hundreds and four fifty five Buicks. I got a perfect example made <laughs> there right there. Ah. There we go. Right in a Bud <laughs> retard highway. But no, I mean the Chrysler's done a great job, and I think just about everybody listening could agree no, that. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give them all the credit in the world, but they are building pretty decent cars. I'm yeah. actually. I mean, literally, if I wanted a new performance car right now, I would buy a Mustang wow. or a Corvette. We were just talking about I Mustangs. I wouldn't touch a Dodge. I, I, why, why not? Tell us why. Oh, they're heavy. Heavy. Uh, as soon as they said they had to halt pr- production and sales of the Hellcat because they couldn't keep up with demand, that was kind of like, why can't you keep up with demand? Well, it's one of two things. Either what are you doing wrong building these motors? Well, many either the aforementioned retards that are still a Chrysler guys are working at Chrysler, or I mean, maybe maybe they really didn't oh, think. Okay, yeah, you're not offending either. So. No, well, maybe, maybe <laughs> I, I'm I'm here to offend. I get hate uh, emails, emails and posts. I don't care. Yeah, I was I was figuring um, maybe they just didn't know how successful the, the exactly. sale would be. Yeah, uh, I so think now that they know, no, they need I mean, a whole I, plant I, I, to make sure they can get it off. Still, I mean. The Corvette for the last 10 years has been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much. Have they been have they been fantastic in sales? Yeah. Yeah. Well, have? I mean, I I I I'm not a practical person. I don't look at sales. I look at like this is the car you're building and you know, do I appreciate its performance and power and all of that? Yeah. Really mm. appreciate the Corvette. Well, how did they get heavier? How did you make a two-seater oh, sports car heavier? I had this conversation the other day. With who? Five when they, they when Tad, you know, the dipshit sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, the C5, I thought when they said, okay, we're going to build a lighter weight Corvette. We'll put the, 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 the convertible hard top on a, on a regular sedan and we'll try and trim some weight. And the thing, they got the thing down to what, 3,400 pounds? Well, I don't know, because I, I just went through this with the C6s, because I had said something, my car is a steel frame, but it has a lot of carbon fiber body parts. So we, I, I actually went to like a Corvette Forum, one of the Corvette hangout things, and there were some people that weighed Z06s, and they got them at like under 3,100 pounds without doing any lightning. You know, like that's what they would weigh. But you have the scales out there. Just weigh it. I, and, you know, Brian had said that to me. He's like, why don't we just put your car down on no, no, scales no, no, and see what it weighs? Dad and I, I will say that to you. You own the scale. <laughs> yeah. Well, what does it take? A half hour? No, it would take a couple of minutes. I mean, just drop the thing right on there. But I just, I, okay. I really hadn't thought about it. But when, so I went looking, it looks like my thing being a steel, the steel chassis and a convertible looks like it's about 180 pounds heavier than a Z06. So figure mine's like 32 or something. You know, that's about what they weigh. Now, I think the new ones. That's still light, though. I still think Four that's cars. fairly oh, light. They're 37, 38. Yeah, that's what the, the new ones are heavy. They're really heavy. I think I think the non-convertible Z06 is 3560. That's heavy. Yeah. I mean. No, and it, I mean. My my sixty six Caprice was that much, yeah. But you know, we and you know, Tom and I talked about this on our road trip to to Never Neverland, New York. Um, <laughs> I I think that part of this is the government regulations. 
no, what yeah. it takes to get past crash testing. Um, obviously, the addition of all the electronics, the new gadgets, we all have to have iPhone Connect and you know all the other crap they've yeah, got. No, I, Airbags all over the place. I, I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, yeah, and airbags weigh, and airbag controls weigh, and you have to add the copper for all of the computers running everything. You know, but literally, I mean, are we talking a thousand pounds more? I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's a thousand. I mean, I, I don't it's close. think it is, it's but at I'd least seven. For, you know, somebody official to say, here's what we had to add, and here's how much it cost us in weight. Side impact beams and the doors, you know, all the stuff that they've added over time. And I mean, and, and this new one, and it cracked me up because that was one of the main things when they were talking about the C7, totally new frame construction, all aluminum and it, the lightest Corvette chassis ever. So they made the lightest chassis ever and then just put more shit on no, top no, of it. And it, 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 in, you know, I'm a manufacturing engineer, the, the hydro forming they do to form the rails and stuff, it's all terribly impressive and terribly lightweight. Right. What happened with the rest of the car? I don't know. I, I know that the blower side of things, everybody's got to remember the new Z06s and Z07s have a supercharger so that there's a chunk of weight there. I mean, no doubt. Yeah, that's, you know, 60, 70 pounds laying very high well, on the motor. Well, I got to say this. Fireman Jeff was here, and I realize the Mustang, different classification of vehicle, but I think he, didn't he say the other week that his thing is like damn near 3,800 pounds? No, I thought he said it was over four. Yeah, he said it was, it was heavy. over four? Yeah. Really? That car looked good and yeah, sounded 41 good. or something like that. With him in it. Uh, yeah, I man. Um, yeah, it's probably him weighing it, so it's probably probably thirty eight something. That, that's uh, everything's gotten the, heavy. The Mustangs are heavy. Well, I, I again, I think no, that I, I remember my seventy six Transit. It was like one of the few cars <laughs> that actually rolled over the scales in English Town, and I was in it and it weighed thirty six forty. Yeah, that's probably was, about I'm right. Not a small boy. So I'm these, not a small boy. I'm two twenty. These these two twenty is like what I've weighed since high school. Right. These newer cars I mean, are well, definitely. Why have these things gotten? So much heavier, and yes, I will grant. There's a lot of safety stuff, but I, 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 you know, I had an iron block, iron heads. Now they've got aluminum block, aluminum heads. You know, I mean, I, I don't understand why cars are getting so heavy. Power seats, power this, power that. Yeah, I mean, and that that's everything. Yeah, but that that's a big part of it. Everybody wants the hot rod, but they want the convenience and comfort. But if you want that convenience and comfort, then that comes with something called carbon fiber, and then the price isn't there. Right. So I, I'm, I'm again, I'll, I'll, I'll step back and just give my ridiculous comparison. Uh, the, 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 and I'm sure as soon as I say it, it will be something you also remember is the Smurf Blue Trans Am. Smurf Blue Trans Am. Yeah, I remember that thing. Had my old uh, Super Traps on it. Power windows, power steering, power brakes, power everything. Stick small block Chevy instead of the Pontiac motor. That was the 3640 car. I mean, and it, it, it was not built light. There was no lightning done to it. It's also a unibody <laughs> subframe car. Yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's, I mean, for me, sports car stuff should be light as you could possibly get it. Now, like my mom, she just wrecked, uh, well, she didn't wreck. God forbid mom hears this and fucking <laughs> blows an aneurysm on us. Um, some <laughs> some lady, I don't know, she was watching she was watching some somebody had a dump truck in the back of a pickup so the lady was coming towards her and she thought the i don't know that the the wheelbarrow was going to fall out of the back of the pickup so she just turned right into my mom fucked her car all up across uh, it was a 2010 mom's okay yeah she, yeah she's good um hey, dog man. dog hey, was man. all shaken up yeah she's good she's a tough old bat <laughs> she ain't going anywhere no i can see jackson getting a little fucking weirder for that yeah um but uh, she went and she bought a new one and one of the things that i saw is this thing's got airbags everywhere. Yeah, Every, yeah. Side airbags, door airbags, front airbags, like so seat, seat belt airbags. And all still? kinds of shit, dude. I mean, you, if no, that, and airbags aren't heavy, but if you add 15 of them and then all the copper to wire them in, plus, you know, computers to run them, yeah, we're talking about weight. Yeah, but also the, the double metal where they're mounted and stuff like that. It's got to be a substantial mm -hmm. place where it's mounted to. Yeah, I mean, there there was a lot and, you know, you look at, now granted, that's a, a quote-unquote luxury car. It's like it's yeah. all just lacrosse. It's a nice car to drive. It's right. probably very similar to like a Cadillac no, CTS. I, I actually right. like them because I'm getting old. Yeah, ni really nice car. Like when I putted around in hers, it's nice. Um, but it has like, 
you know, collision assist this, you know, oh, yeah. lane turn this, all that little creature shit that you add, it all comes at a weight cost. I mean, look, if you're building a race car, you'd be like, you'd be like rooting through the dashboard. What's this box? Collision assist? Right out the window. <laughs> I mean, you, <laughs> you know, what do you even think yeah, about it? True indeed. No, no. Tad's fucking Lincoln. You know, like uh, the, uh, the, the first Lincoln I sold Tad, you know, like, okay, the anti-locks and this, and that, and the other just don't work. So I, I like, okay, fine. I'm just going to hard pipe around it. And I threw out, you know, at least fifteen pounds of aluminum. <laughs> yeah, that, there's a lot of a lot of that stuff adds up. There's a lot of little dumb stuff like that, and you know, I. I yeah, if, but now my link is lightweight compared to everything else. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I noticed you saving weight with the door handle. <laughs> I, I noticed. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> What'd you fix it? Oh yeah, <laughs> you, you retard. <laughs> All right, look, Alan, we've gone very long, but I appreciate you calling in. Would you? Oh, and thanks for having me. Would you have any on-air words for Thomas since he's not here? No, not really. I mean, uh, oh, you <laughs> sissy. <laughs> no, I. Uh, Tom, Tom, I'm sure is a very fine guy. His Subaru is a very cool car. It's just not my cup of tea. It doesn't run. It's fine. <laughs> oh boy, you guys are crazy, Alan. Thanks for calling us, man. This is Crunch. Good to hear your voice and, again, bro. And, Abby still wants to come over and meet Captain Crunch, so we're going to have to arrange that at some point. Yeah, let me know. I want to meet Abby. All right, Alan. Good talking to you, man. (laughs) Hey, remember, go Trump 2016. (laughs) (laughs) You cut cut him off? Oh, Oh, yeah. By the way, Mike, speaking of the weight and all that crap, uh, as you sign out, Somerville, there was a McLaren and there was an Ariel Adam there. I couldn't tell if it was a first or second gen. That car is... Light. Main Street, Somerville, New Jersey. It is a car hangout. You know, if you want to go see oh, some Friday cars, nights. Oh, yep. yeah. Head down there. Power and speed. Yep. We're out. Say goodnight, Todd. Good night, Todd. You fixed your door handle. Bye. Fruitcake. <laughs>